Hey guys, it's Ryan with AIinsidertips.com. Just want to bring you a video recapping all the latest going on in the world of AI with updates, news, stories, and much more. Now, before diving into this first big piece of news about GPT 4.5, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel at AI Insider Tips, I would truly appreciate that. I recently hit over 1K subscribers. Um, and I appreciate all the support you guys have given me as I spend hours doing these videos, research, just trying to provide as much value as I can for you to help you learn and stay updated in AI. So diving back in, guys, of course, the very first piece of news I have to tell you is this leak of the GPT 4.5 language model. Now, this is not officially released. So in this image, it shows openai.com forward slash pricing. And there's an image comparing GPT 4.5 to GPT 4 Turbo. Now, if you remember, GPT 4 Turbo was released at OpenAI's Dev Day and is still the most sophisticated and advanced language model from OpenAI. And if I go to this exact page on OpenAI's website for pricing, there is no instance of 4.5. It's GPT 4 Turbo, GPT 4, 3.5 Turbo, and then all this other information down here about models and pricing. So it is not on the website. Um, and when I also look on ChatGPT, both the plus and free version, if you click the language model drop down here, no instance of 4.5 as well. I'm still seeing 3.5 and 4. If you are seeing something different than what I'm seeing, please let me know in the comments. But I believe this is the case of 4.5 is not available for users yet. So this leak right here, what was the, really interesting to me is you'll notice how much more expensive this GPT 4.5 language model is compared to GPT 4 Turbo. GPT 4 Turbo is currently at one cent per 1K token input, three cents per 1K tokens output. Compare that to this 4.5 language model. Apparently it's six cents per 1K tokens input and 18 cents per 1K tokens output. So six times more expensive on an input level for GPT 4.5 compared to GPT 4 Turbo. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens here. Now, if you go down here and read this uh, Twitter thread here, there was actually a Reddit thread release that someone who was an insider dropped this image on Reddit. And if you scroll down, you know, you'll see all sorts of comments. This guy says, I mean, it could be a link, a leak, excuse me. This was the exact same GPT-4 Turbo pricing leak days, hours before it was released. So we saw the exact same thing happen with GPT-4 Turbo, and then it was released. So I would assume there is a 4.5 model coming somewhat in the near future. Um, but if you scroll down here, it looks like Sam Altman actually commented on this, who is the CEO at OpenAI. Uh, this guy replied, GPT 4.5 leak legit or no? Sam Altman said, nah. So who knows if it's legit or not, guys? I'm just showing you what I see on social media and the internet. So on the same topic of OpenAI, Sam Altman tweeted this on December 13th, so a few days ago, that ChatGPT Plus subscriptions are back. Now, I have several videos that talk about ChatGPT pausing their Plus subscriptions due to server overloads. So if I come back to my free ChatGPT account, and I click upgrade to plus, you'll see now that there is no more waiting list. So I can simply click upgrade to plus if I wanna do that on this account. It'll take me to the checkout page and you can now get back to chat GPT plus if you wanna to subscribe to their software. So pretty cool to see that it's back. Again, on the same topic of OpenAI, they recently announced this partnership with a company called Axel Springer. Um, so Axel Springer is a publishing house, so they're big in journalism. Um, and it says here, Axel Springer is the first publishing house globally to partner with us on a deeper integration of journalism and AI technologies. Now, it's no surprise here that ever since the release of ChatGPT and generative AI, there's always been a clash between journalism and generative AI. And for obvious reasons, as AI tools are scraping a lot of data and text and content from journalism sites and then using that in their AI models to train them. So obviously a lot of tension here. Uh, so it's very interesting that Axel Springer and OpenAI have announced a global partnership to strengthen independent journalism in the age of artificial intelligence. It says here, the initiative will enrich users' experience with ChatGPT by adding recent and authoritative content on a wide variety of topics and explicitly value the publisher's role in contributing to OpenAI's products. So pretty revolutionary here to see something like this happen. The CEO of Axel Springer uh, commented on this situation. So here's some more information about Axel Springer here. Um, but really interesting to see this, that OpenAI is partnering with a uh, publishing house or a publisher 
Um, and I'm curious to see where this relationship is going to go and if other you know, AI companies like OpenAI follow suit and partner with more publishing companies. Um, so that's really interesting to see as well. So guys, the next piece of news I wanna show you is this Tesla Optimus. Now I saw this pop up on my Twitter account. So it looks like it came out December 12th. I saw this a couple days ago, so maybe I'm a little late to this. Um, and again, I will leave a link to this and everything else that I mentioned in this video in the description below for you guys to check out. But it looks like this is another one of Tesla's projects is this Optimus robot. Now they have a video here that explains what Optimus is. Um, and they also have on their website, tesla.com forward slash AI. They talk about the Tesla bot in more detail here. And if you click see opportunities, there's actually a lot of job postings related to this Tesla bot. So it appears Tesla is investing a lot of money into robotics. Um, you'll see all sorts of different engineering jobs, uh, technician jobs, um, a lot of careers and jobs here related to this Tesla Optimus and their robotics program. So just interesting to see Tesla getting more involved in robotics and other forms of AI. Now guys, the next thing I wanna let you know about is that Google's Gemini demo was faked. I may, I may be a little late on this one as this article came December 7th from TechCrunch, um, but I made a couple of videos on Gemini, which is Google's new AI model inside Bard that you can use right now with a free account. Um, and they had this uh, AI demo here that really just blew everyone away in the AI community, including myself when I first watched this. So there's this dialogue here where it's doing all these AI tasks in real time. Um, and it seems very impressive when you watch it, but then you come to find out that just one problem, the video isn't real. We created the demo by capturing footage in order to test Gemini's capabilities on a wide range of challenges. Then we prompted Gemini using still image frames from the footage and prompting via text. So this whole thing wasn't real. Now, is Gemini still an impressive language model? Absolutely. But um, the fact that Google went these types of measures to make the AI language model look better than it really is, it doesn't surprise me one bit. So I just thought this was funny and interesting that Google decided to do this in their launch demo. So guys, the next piece of news I wanna let you know about is what's called Mid Journey Alpha. Now, Mid Journey Alpha looks like is on its own separate site for Mid Journey. If you've ever used Mid Journey before, you know that you've had to use the Discord server. So I'm on Mid Journey site here. Um, and some people are turned away by using Discord. It's just, it's more of a hassle. You have to create another Discord account. Um, and there's just a lot more going on if you already are involved in other Discord channels. It would just be nice if Midjourney had its own AI generative software or website where you can just make images straight from a website. Um, and that's what this tweet hints at right here. So you'll see the video from this creator, Nick St. Pierre. Um, so he leaves a link to alpha.midjourney.com. But when I click that, it just directs me to the original Midjourney site. Um, you'll see it says alpha.midjourney.com. Um, but the issue here and what I found is that you need to have created thousands and thousands of images inside Midjourney to get access to this Midjourney Alpha website. Um, so he goes down and talks about here, um, just this video about all the different things you can do. Um, so you guys can watch this if you want. Just, I just think this interface also looks have a lot cleaner than just what's sliders, been going on with Discord and Midjourney. Stylized. Um, and especially now, with all the competition in the AI text to image space, um, I think this is a great move for Midjourney, moving people away from Discord to their own website um, where you can generate images inside a standalone Midjourney website. I think that's really cool. So if you guys have access to this Midjourney Alpha, let me know in the comments below. But again, I believe you have to be a Midjourney power user and generate tens of thousands of images in order to get access to this. Uh, the next piece of news, guys, is in Google Search Labs. You can go to this site here, AI Test Kitchen dot with google.com forward slash tools the music fx so there's this music fx that google actually released so if i go back here this is the main page and if i scroll down um, there's all sorts of projects that google search labs is working on there's a text fx one um, but here's the music fx so if i click launch music fx this is a text to audio tool and it's completely free all you need is a google account as you'll see i'm just signed in with my ai insider tips google account um, and you can type whatever you want. And I'm just going to do a quick one in this example. I'll just say uh, classical music, just something extremely simple. Um, we'll click generate prompt. So now it's going to generate an actual more optimized audio prompt to give it to this tool. Um, and we'll give it a few seconds here while it is generating the music. <laughs> See what I can.
can do and get see how sophisticated this AI text to audio tool can get. But really cool um, that Music FX is a free tool to use as a lot of these are paid in this text to audio space. So just a final quick piece of news here, Claude, which is the large language model or LLM developed by the company called Anthropic, has released this new extension called Claude for Google Sheets. So you can get an API key from Claude. Uh, looks like you can download this extension, enter your Anthropic API key, and you can start using Claude inside Google Sheets. It gives you know all these examples here or screenshots on this press release. Um, where you can do formulas and you can just do any typical API call that you can already do similar to other language models. We see this with OpenAI all the time. We can integrate an API key and you can get outputs in GPT-4, 3.5, um, whatever the language model that you want to use via API access. Um, so that's it, guys. Again, just wanted to bring you a quick video recapping all the most important news over the past week or so in the world of artificial intelligence. Again, the most important piece of news here, in my opinion, is this leak of GPT 4.5. So stay updated. If this language model does come out in the near future, we saw something similar with GPT 4 Turbo. It got leaked, and then several days later, OpenAI's Dev Day came out, and then GPT 4 Turbo was announced. So it would make sense, in my opinion, that 4.5 is a language model on the horizon in addition to GPT-5, which actually got announced. And I do have a separate video talking about that announcement um, from OpenAI. But that's it, guys. Again, if you appreciate videos like this where I just bring you the most important stories and news in the world of AI, I would appreciate you subscribing to my channel at AI Insider Tips. And again, guys, this is Ryan. I hope you all have a great day.